Hello, welcome back to Story Reckless. I'm Nathan. We're back for a bit until the next holiday comes around. Uh, and I am the DM here, and I use he, him pronouns. And we are an actual play D&D live stream playing in the Descent into Avernus campaign. Uh, let's do some player intros. My name's Claire. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm still playing Kadom, half-elf grave cleric who might actually be taking a nap right now. Uh, my name is Olive. I use she and they pronouns, and I am currently, I barely, barely am holding on to my voice. I am quite sick. Um, so Calliope might be off screen on <laughs> today's episode. We'll see. Um, and I think Calliope is currently in the mechanics lodge. You just got okay. a, a war machine running, I believe. I think so. I think so. Yeah, you just yeah. fixed it for uh, Chucka and Clonk. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Hi, I'm Enyo, they, them pronouns, playing Pip, who is an absolute trash fire. And <laughs> while everyone else is just starting up an infernal war machine or taking a nap and generally having a good time, she convinced Valor to like just go pick on a madcap for some reason and now is getting chased. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful. It's delightful. Um, yeah, with with that in mind, <laughs> let's jump into the recap. Uh, so last we left off, you all uh, you all had finished speaking with well, the two of you had finished speaking with Mad Maggie. Kadam had finished speaking with some locals, uh, and you reconvened within your tent within the hostel to discuss what is next. And ultimately agreed to, um, or Lulu agreed to do this ritual with Mad Maggie in hopes of retrieving some of her lost memories. Um, but that wouldn't be until a long rest, <laughs> uh, until some time has passed. Um, so you have a bit of time here to relax and try to recuperate and um, recover before, you know, setting off on this next part of your adventure. Uh, and yes, Calliope, you went off and helped repair this infernal war machine for Chukka and Klonk, uh, finding that there was a, a gear, a cog made from a piece of demon um, that still had some sort of demon essence within it that was like corrupting the machine and causing it not to be able to work. Uh, and that's right, did you? Wait, did you fit? Yeah, you fixed it. Did you pull Kadam over to to? I try to remember Kadam. What did you did you cast like a? Oh no, I, re bolt. I remember now. That's right. Yeah, you cast guiding bolt and it exploded <laughs> into a thousand pieces. Uh, and my wife, <laughs> not a mechanic. Oh my god, how could I forget that? That was hilarious. Yeah, you cast the Guiding Bolt and destroyed the cog. Um, and the Calliope, like a true <laughs> true old lady with a 2,000 piece puzzle, you sat down and used mending to <laughs> repair the cog and put it back together. Um, and you got the uh, war machine to start up and start working. Uh, Kadam, you, I believe, went back and retired to the tent to hopefully nap. While Pip, you went off with Valor uh, to go and investigate this madcap that Pins and Needles uh, told you about, the two imps, claiming that this madcap wanted to kill Lulu and they asked, uh, well, asked you or warned you of this and told you you should probably go kill this madcap before it gets to Lulu. Uh, and so Pip, you went to go investigate with Valor in hopes of sneaking up behind the madcap and catching them in a net and whisking away with them to interrogate them or ask some questions or whatever, figure out what, what the deal was. Um, and then some problems happened and the net fell and the madcap saw the net and then saw you and then decided it wanted to kill you. And then all of the madcap's friends came over and also wanted to come and kill you and Valor and <laughs> just turned into a- uh... I, I just legit didn't <laughs> expect him to have friends. It just, it just uh, it turned into a crazy chase with all of you running away, the little madcaps chasing you. 
Uh, and in fact, with with that, uh, we should probably jump back over to the actual game here. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, let me see here. Let's do... Sure, we'll do this one. Um, and with that being said, uh, as you managed... Uh, Valor managed to scoop up this madcap within the net, I believe, and is currently like Santa Clausing away with the madcap um, in the net, squirming and wriggling while Pip, you, and Little Dummy and Gilder are trying to desperately knock it out. Uh, still, this creature is alive and squirming in the net while all the rest of the madcaps are pursuing, gleefully cackling with their strange little blade arms trying to dice you up. Uh, so, <laughs> as we watch the two of you scampering across this broken landscape, uh, the cra uh, the like bone and metal wall behind you kind of stretching off uh, in front of you with bits and pieces of scrap strewn across the ground, and you can hear the chittering of these creatures scrambling behind you, <laughs> trying to catch up with you, and uh, that is where we're going to pick up. So, let me send this over. Uh, it is the Madcap's turn, I believe, uh, all of them. So I'm going to start with the one that's currently stuck in the net. Um, now I believe it can try to slice the net open, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, do you happen to have the AC of the net? Uh, okay. What is it? Oh, it's just 10. Okay. Um, all of you are unmuted, but silent. That's odd. <laughs> no, yeah, I can't hear you. Yeah, your, your voice has gone entirely. <laughs> uh, 10. Okay. 10 AC, Thank 5 you. hit points. Okay. Well, uh, I believe the madcap is restrained while in the net, so these that attacks make sense yeah so these attacks will yeah restrain okay so the oh no we lost all of but now my that's okay we'll deal with that when uh they get back so uh the madcap is going to try to cut out of this net attacks at disadvantage here we go uh what do we got here an 11 so the 11 will hit and it deals nine slashing damage so i believe that should slice right through it so with the first attack, the madcap in the net is struggling and cuts right through the net and falls out prone onto the ground behind Valor, uh, squirming, stands up and uh, looking up at Valor and is going to try to slice Valor's uh, legs with um, its little claws. Here we go. Uh, two more attacks. An 18? Um, parry. Okay, so that one is smacked out of the way um, with Valor's glaive, and the other one just off the armor. Uh, and then all the other madcaps come swarming in. Um, that one, uh, kind of to the uh, west of you, is trying to chase down the chicken. I'm going to make a roll for it and see if I can catch it. Um do that first uh what do we let's call this sure i'll just have it roll an attack oh yeah definitely hits okay so this one is off over this way and is currently carving up into the abyssal chicken the other three come running across the yard and will swarm around uh, i think they only have 25 feet of movement oh yeah they can all come scrambling up to you all. Uh, so I'm going to do two on Valor, one on Pip. This one will be at advantage. Here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, okay, first one on Valor is a natural 20. So that's going to be 15 points of slashing. Woo! Yeah. Okay. Um, second one is an 18. That hits. Eight points of slashing, and the last one is a... Uh, Oh, they're all at advantage because it's flanking. 
So yeah, these all hit. Last one's a 22, so seven points on that last okay. one. Okay. Um, the other one is not flanking and is going to try to carve into Valor uh, normal attacks. Here we go. Oh my goodness, really good rolls. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no. Uh, okay, you ready? Yep. 10. 9 and 10. Uh, so I am down with the first hit. Oh no. I'm perfectly at zero. With the first hit. If it does 10 damage? Yeah. Yep. I'm down. Holy shit. Okay. Uh... Oh no! We were just saying before the stream that Valor's fine! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, okay, so this is what's gonna happen. It's the first one. Sh cuts Valor down. She falls. Second hit strikes down into Valor. That's automatic two failed death saves. And with the next one, as it sees Valor kind of go limp, <clears throat> looks up at Pip and is gonna go towards Pip with that 25 for 10 slashing damage to Pip. Uh, and then the final bad cap. Wow, these guys are brutal. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, final mad cap is going for you, Pip. Yep. Uh, 12 to hit. Thank God. No. An 8. And a, to hit? And a 15. Does a 15 hit? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought that was damage. And I was no, like, no, 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 no. even after... Okay. So, uh, no, yeah, uh, does a 15 hit? No! Really? Okay, so all all three of those miss as this one is trying to... Ah, trying to claw at you. Um, and the one that... I'm gonna say the one that got Valor just for flavor is literally... Uh, oh yeah, would have had to. It's, it's on top of Valor. It, like, crawls on top of Valor to get at you, like... Ah, um, so they are all just swarming around you, uh, trying to claw into you, taking us to, uh, Little Dummy. Oh my god. Can you hear me now? Yes, 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 okay. yes. Um, <laughs> god, what does Little Dummy do? Little Dummy has done their job. Um, hmm. I guess... Valor could die here. I just realized if she, if she rolls a, a... Sorry, little dummy. I think little dummy is going to try to, like, distract them and, like, go down and, like, scoop up some, I don't know, junk off of this big pile. Okay. Um, and just start chucking it at them and, like, making kind of, like, puppet, like, come and get me okay. sort of things. Um, wow. Well, that's what I want to do. How do we do that in, in game mechanics? Uh, yeah. I mean, I want to say it's like a charisma check of some kind, like a persuasion mm, like role. Intimidation or yeah, persuasion. intimidation or persuasion would would make uh -huh, the most sense uh -huh. to me. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. That's negative two to all of those. Oh no. <laughs> um, well, I I mean, so I like the idea of a little dummy scooping down and picking up things and throwing. Yeah, just go ahead and make that persuasion roll. And we'll see. Yeah, that's just an eight. Oh, an eight, okay. Um, yeah. I'd say that one of them, uh, uh, like a piece of scrap, smacks it in the back of the head and it whips around. <sighs> Seeing little dummy like tauntingly floating up there. Uh, so you, it, little dummy managed to grab the attention of, of one. Okay, and then I guess, yeah, it's just gonna... Um move off to maybe go find Calliope to go get help. Okay. And how high off the ground is Little Dummy? Uh, currently 15 feet, 15 feet. I okay, believe cool. we said. Cool. Um, and the speed is fly 30 feet. And I assume that that was my action, so I can't dash. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, actually, so this is a good point, because if Little Dummy is 15 feet up, Little Dummy had to swoop down 15 feet, grab, and then continue. Well, it's a big pile, right? Mm hmm So it could just go sideways a little bit. <laughs> 15 foot pile of anything's enormous. That is enormous. I would give you... Wow, that would be huge. 
Yeah, I mean, sure. I would say Lil Dummy could use 10 feet of movement to fly down, therefore it has 20 feet left. Okay. I mean, I guess just flying in that direction. Okay, so <laughs> Lil Dummy goes flying off in that direction um, as this madcap watches. Okay. Uh, anything else for Little Dummy? Act, that's action. Okay. No bonus actions. <laughs> All right, Valor. Let's see if you survive. I can't. Uh, I, I, oh, wow. Okay. Let's see what happens. Here we go. I really can't. Did you roll? What did you roll? A two? Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Oh, Let's all take a second oh, here. This is salvageable. We'll see what happens. So, Valor, unfortunately, as that blade of the creature goes into Valor's chest and pulls out, and it starts scrambling across her to go towards Pip. Uh, what? I, I'm just going to ask you, Claire, since you were kind of controlling Valor. Please, please don't. Don't? Okay. <sighs> I would much rather you do it. All right. Um... Yeah, I mean, Valor, honestly, I think what happens is the the first hit that knocks her down, it gets her across the back of a leg and she kind of crumples onto her back and lets out a oh, son of a bitch as it <laughs> into her chest and she... <coughs> <laughs> Is this really the way? <coughs> and just goes limp onto the ground as it starts scrambling towards uh, Pip. Still just the slightest bit of a smile on her face. And it is now your turn, Pip. It just goes. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Pip? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was funny time for that. I'm holy shit. I mean, she's. I I can't. I can't use healing word anymore. You can't. Oh, you're out of spell yeah. slots. No, I mean I can, but with oh I mean, would right, that do anything. No, no. Right. <laughs> no. fuck am I gonna do? Um, uh, okay. I, I, uh, let me take a moment. There's no way yeah. to get from that's 85, 85 feet. I can't do that within a minute. Uh, I mean, one, you know, one round is six seconds. Mm. So in you can, you know, if you move and dash, that's 60 feet in six seconds, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean. How noisy is it here? How, how will the yeah. sound carry? I mean, yeah, this is, this is, uh, I think, it's like, a, I mean, it's a, not a quiet place. Like, there are people coming in and out with these loud war machines there's people moving around and talking and you know doing work uh it's not a quiet place but it's only been i think three rounds so we'll see if this starts to garner any attention okay okay um i think at this point uh pip is just going to to disengage and okay. run uh to uh, while yelling i guess um for i, I think uh, just completely uh forgetting to to even use their devil names um okay just just yelling for kadam and calliope that valor is down yeah, are you are you gonna dash or just? Uh, I if I dash, though, uh, two of them are gonna get 
bonus attacks. action disengage. Yep. Yeah, that's why I was going to disengage. Don't don't you have the rogue bonus then... action disengage or no? I thought you had yeah, one I level. Yeah, I do. I do. I yeah. do. Yeah. So I'm going to disengage first, and then I'm going to dash. Okay, so you can move 60 feet. Go ahead and move yourself 60 feet as you go sprinting across the yard, screaming out for your friends, um, what yelling is Valor this is down. in the middle? Oh, that right. is a big rock wall. Like that, that's that's okay. the massive- I'll go this way. Yeah, 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 you'd have to go that way. Okay, so you go sprinting across the yard, shouting, um, shouting for your friends' names that Valor is down. Uh, I would say, yeah, at this point- Do I hear? Kadam, yeah, I mean, you and Lulu are actually probably back over here, I'd imagine, camped. But sure. um, I don't, I mean, I would say here is odd to place a tent right in the entryway. Maybe you're over here. I'm fine with either one. All right. Sure. We'll say you're camped over there. Um, so as uh, I would say, yeah. Kadam, were you asleep? I'm trying to be. Okay. I'm still thinking myself in circles right now. Okay, then yes. Uh, as you're sitting there trying to get yourself to fall asleep, you suddenly hear, like, kind of distant at first, and then progressively very loud, Pip screaming, Valor's down. Um, coming from somewhere outside. I'm up. I'm, I'm running. Uh, roll initiative for me, Kidam. Calliope, I think, unfortunately, you are you are too I far away. Too far. You're also in a noisy garage full of Kenku, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. 14. 14, okay. Darn I'm, good for me. I'm gonna say uh, we gotta get through this round first, and then you'll slot in. All right. Um... Uh, all right, that was Pip. It's now the Madcaps. Uh, the Madcaps, uh, one of them goes running towards Little Dummy, like running uh, towards Little Dummy, and uh, okay, I'm gonna I'll, as a compromise, I'll give you Little Dummy is not 15 feet up, but 10 feet up. I think in order to, you know, had to go down, grab it, and then fly Makes off. Makes sense. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Um, there is a chance here this madcap is going to just, I'm going to have him roll a, a athletics check. It's going to try to leap off of this piece of scrap and try to ah! jump up to grab on to little dummy. Um, so athletics. Ooh, 16, no, uh, not good enough to get up there. Just barely <laughs> missing little dummy and lands down below like like a rabid dog just staring up, <laughs> trying to get it, little dummy. The other- I think he even like gets a piece of little dummy and like little dummy just like starts unraveling. Mm -hmm. And like reaches down and somehow like has like a piece of sharp metal and just like <laughs> cuts off that strand of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, oh, actually, just sorry for flavor. I'm actually, that that one was Wazik, so I'm going to have, it was this one that would have done that. Um, the other two, the one that's on top of Valor uh, goes running with the other one. They start running towards um, Pip, and they will dash to get 50 feet in the direction of Pip as they come running across the yard, kind of cackling as they see you fleeing and screaming. Um, Wazik just gets on top of Valor's body and is just like smiling and staring at, at Valor and starts to just like grab her head and just kind of move it around as it's <laughs> um, and you just hear this horrible sound of the little creatures running up behind you Pip as you're trying to get away uh, that is everything that they can do and that takes us to little dummy move and dash 60 feet. Move and dash. Okay, go for and it. Good. Calliope. All right. Uh, at the top of the round on Valor's turn, uh, Pip, you catch a little bit of movement off to your left, kind of over by, uh, kind of in the direction of the entrance where there's this big scrap pile. You watch um, 
it catches your eye because it's kind of like a, a bright little flash of light and you see this floating flaming skull kind of pop out from around the corner of, of rubble and sort of looking in the direction of all this chaos happening. Um, we'll see what happens with that. I'm going to roll initiative and see where they end up. I swear I'm hearing the Baldur's Gate 3 like initiative roll sound as like more people <laughs> get added to this battle. Um, so this yeah. flame skull appears from around the corner, sh- kind of staring off at the direction of all this happening and the, the yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, Valor unfortunately is lying there on the ground with this creature on top of her body. Um, Pip, it is your turn. Okay, what does Pip know about flaming skulls to to possibly, like, are, how manipulatable are they? Oh, what do you know about flame skulls? Um, yeah. Roll an arcana check for me. Oof. Just the thing I love to do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know dick all about them. Uh, you got six. Okay, yeah. Um, you have no idea. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I think the only experience you've probably... With a six, I'd say the only experience you've had with the Flame Skull is um, towards the end of your time in Baldur's Gate when you started rolling with uh, Kadam and crew, um, you would have maybe have seen, like, a Flame Skull moving throughout the city uh, with... We had one fireball us. That too. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Oh my god, how could I forget? Uh, I missed that part though. Pip didn't get fireballed. Because Pip, Pip didn't get fireballed. Pip was out of the room. That's right. Pip had fled. Pip sad yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Pip. That's the experience you have with flame skulls. Is that in Baldur's Gate you saw them rolling around with flaming fist and kind of being used as weapons. Beyond that, you don't really know anything. So. Okay. Well. Um, uh. If I talk to it, um, would that be my action? No, talking is a free action. I mean, keep okay. in mind, try to keep it Short, somewhat yeah. believable, yeah. Okay, so I I think Pip sees this flame skull pop out uh, and sort of uh, just yells at it like, Hey, these madcaps are loose. Are you going to handle that? Uh, you shout that across the yard to it um, and the you see it can't really express it can't make expressions on its face but you do watch the flames within the eyes kind of blaze up and uh you hear it shout oh what wretched creatures (laughs) um and we'll see what happens when it gets to uh their turn uh all right uh pippi still have your turn Okay, um, Jesus, I mean, thank you, Kadam, for this, uh, hellfire thing, but I, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna, uh, shoot him with, <laughs> with Mad Maggie's pistol. I'm going yeah. to use the, the hellfire, uh, charge. How many charges do I? Uh, it should, yeah, re- what the hell? It, it should recharge yeah. at, I believe I it's like done. at dawn or something. I'm going to use two charges on it. <laughs> okay. I'm so sick of these guys. So you whip around, pulling out Mad Maggie's pistol, lighting up. Um, they both make saves, right? Yes, they make dexterity saves. Okay. Boom and boom. Uh, a six for one, so that's definitely a failure. And the other one is a 16. <sighs> okay. Is that a success? It. Okay, so that one yeah, will take half. But it still half takes damage. half, yeah. Okay, 3d10. Oh, right, 4d10 and 4d6. Two, three, four. Oh, uh, hold on. I did that. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's 49 total, uh, uh, but uh, that is 20... Uh, okay, so that is. <laughs> wait, wait, forty nine <laughs> damage. Yeah, hold on. Uh, but I, I messed, I messed that up because I added it all together. It's okay. Um, it's still a lot, but. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll uh, to to help you out. They don't have resistance to 
fire or piercing. So they will take. Okay. You don't have to split up the damage. So is it's a total of forty nine damage. Yeah. Okay, so half of that is twenty four. Yeah. Okay, so the one at the back takes twenty four damage. The one at the front takes the full forty nine. <laughs> and okay, what does it look like, Pip, as you poof, blast uh, this? this flame gout of shrapnel and fire across these these creatures um i i like to believe that when uh we were visiting mad maggie just for funsies she tweaked it a little bit to make it look like um a bit like uh i don't know whatever her her favorite creature is or maybe just a dragon Mm -hmm. um so it's uh like an inferno that is directed Okay. To look like a dragon. Oh, like the and fire just, turns into the yeah. shape of a. Okay. Yes. That's awesome. So is it. It erupts out of the front of the pistol and engulfs these two madcaps. Uh, you can hear the sound of pieces of hot metal skittering across the ground. And as the flames clear, one of them is just sitting there singed and burnt. And the other one is just down on the on the ground in a pile of ashes just completely obliterated uh so one of them was completely destroyed by that um and the other one looks really hurt uh so that was your action how high up is this pillar here oh like god at least at least 20 feet um i'm gonna say 30 feet up and the doors the double doors are like 20 feet so yeah 30 feet to the top of the pillar Okay. Well, uh, I, I guess I'll just. And keep in mind I that, find, like, that yeah. is all solid rock. Like, yeah, yeah, like rock okay, cliff. Okay. okay. Well, I'm just going to to just move a bit and then hide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> action, hide. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You can get just behind the door there um, and go ahead and roll your bonus action hide. Oh my god. Also, if you're rolling in witch dice, I think you need to join the room because I'm not seeing your rolls pop up. Oh shoot, yeah, sorry. Okay. I hit, um, I just didn't Excuse hit me. the... Alright. I can see this so clearly, like, Pip having, like, let off a blast and then, like, duck around a corner. And yeah! Are like... you kidding me? Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh no! Uh, yeah, I mean, you let off this crazy blast. <laughs> And then duck around the corner and are very clearly visible as the still, uh, the still smoking pistol is just letting out this gout of smoke from around the corner from where you hid. Um, all right. But at this point, can uh, <laughs> Pip can see like Dom and Lulu? Uh, no, you can see the tent. They have not. They the have tent. not emerged from the okay, tent. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So Pip. You're pressed up against the, the, the door there, taking us to Kadam. Um, I guess I didn't roll for Lulu. Uh, she's sort of scrambling. I think she fell asleep, like literally catnap. So she is just now waking up. Um, and she'll go okay. she'll go next uh, next round. I have counted it out and I can end up here if I move dash and then bonus action misty step. Okay, awesome. So Kadam, you burst out uh, of the tent. Rocket out of the tent. See Pip. Run past, uh, past Pip. Yeah. And then Misty step like set, like twenty feet from this still alive madcap. To oh yeah. Twenty feet behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this madcap is is bewildered um, as you go rushing past, and then with a flash of light appear behind them. Um, they're kind of they're looking a bit dazed, <laughs> uncertain what to do. Um, and Kadam, as you appear there, you can see across the yard this other madcap is crouched over Valor's completely limp body, and it's just like holding her limp head in its in its clawed hands, and just kind of looking and cackling get the fuck off of her it looks up at you (laughs) uh it starts cackling at you as you shout that from across the yard uh all right that that was your turn kadam (laughs) okay um 
Yeah, uh, Arc F2, you came in at a really crazy moment. Uh, Valor died at the start of our stream. Um, so. First 10 minutes, 15, I think. Yeah. Uh, also, um, yeah, okay. Here we go. Sorry, uh, Calliope, I know you're not, f you're not here at the moment. <laughs> we got to resolve this. Uh, so, it's now the Flame Skull. Uh, the Flame Skull, looking across the yard at these madcaps, one of them now in ashes, the f fire in its eyes blazing, it goes rocketing towards them, 40 feet of movement as it flies straight across the yard towards that one and just starts shouting at this madcap, you vile little creature, shoo! Shoo! Uh, and is going to just start berating this madcap. And what else can they do? Um, yeah, it's just going to shoot a fire ray at this madcap. <laughs> um, so here we go. Uh, 16, I think that hits. Oh, yeah. So 11 points of fire damage, it slams into that madcap and immediately it <laughs> starts <laughs> fire coursing up. Oops, just totally smacked the mic. Sorry, everybody. Um, burning up the side of this madcap and the flame skull looks over at the one that's on top of Valor's limp body. And you, um, Kadam, you can hear this flame skull shrieking from behind you and you hear it go, ah! oh, drat. Um, and does not have the range to shoot at that one. So, yeah, that's that's uh, that's his turn. Uh, Lulu is just now waking up. Um, you can hear Lulu within the tent, Pip. Oh, oh no, get out, oh, what, what's happening? Um, and that's gonna be her turn as Lulu, she wakes up. Lulu, I fucked up. Uh, it's now all the madcaps. Um, this one that has been totally blasted uh, just starts to run and dashes back in the direction of the hovels is just running um i don't think it yeah did not get close enough to you kadam for a tactical opportunity just beeline straight past running away <laughs> uh the one that's now devouring the chicken looks up and sees its companion running past <laughs> and then looks over and sees the flame skull and goes <laughs> And is going to grab the limp carcass of the chicken and start running towards the um, hovels as well. Uh, I think, yeah, I'll just, it disappears into the mess. Um, and the one going for little dummy. Little dummy's too high up. It turns and sees the flame skull coming. And then Wazik on top of Valor sees this as well and looks over towards that one and goes, um, shouts at it in, let's see, actually, yeah. Uh, Kadam, do you speak Sylvan? I don't. You don't, okay. So, and you're too far away, Pip. <laughs> oh no. No, <laughs> oh, no. Time it no. <laughs> uh, it starts shouting in Sylvan at that one. Um, and that one comes running towards Wazik and the two of them grab onto Valor's body and they start to try to drag Valor uh, towards the hovel. I am going to murder. So they can only get like, let's see, cause it's half movement. So, I mean, yeah, they, they can get, so this, yeah, this is weird. Cause that one went to there. Okay, yeah. I was going to say they can only get 25 feet. I mean, it's still 25 feet, but they can get 25 feet away as they start to try to to work their way towards the hovels as they're dragging Valor's body. <laughs> dragging the body. And uh, you can hear over your shoulder, Kadam, the, the flame skull shouting, No! Stop that! Uh, taking us to Little Dummy. A uh, little dummy looks like just crested up over the wall and came into the hostel. Saw Kadam go sprinting out uh, and can see Pip there behind the wall. Yeah. <clears throat> little dummy is on a mission. Okay, nice. Go get 
Calliope and Little Dummy cannot talk, cannot make noise. So I've got nothing to do besides move and dash. Okay. Take us to top of the round. Valor's there. Pip, uh, what are you doing? I need to start counting Um, actually turns for how long Valor's been dead. Is this... I'm counting. This was round two of her being dead. Okay, thank you. I'm the cleric. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, Pip. Okay, uh, gonna bonus action dash to to get 60 feet. Okay. Um, and that was young or and let's see how far these guys yeah i'm going to shoot the one that has valor okay yeah so you come running around the corner and see that these two creatures are pulling and you recognize the one as being wazik the one that um started grabbing onto valor in the first place oh hell no wazik yeah go for it i uh Put Valor's body there. To... Are you fucking kidding me? Oh <laughs> Why am I... no! <laughs> oh man, I'm. What is? Hold on. What is going on today? Okay, it is adding your proficiency <laughs> bonus, right? One d ten. Or sorry. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. I think I'm just yeah, rolling six. real yeah, bad. You're, you're, man, yeah, I'm rolling so low. So unfortunately, <laughs> the shot. <laughs> misses uh and is unable to hit uh anything else pip I, you did move in a bonus action and that's I, your yeah, action right i did it yeah okay uh i'm gonna just yell at it in sylvan okay <laughs> but, but i think i couldn't hear what was being said but i recognize like something is ringing <laughs> uh-huh. I, i'm just going to call them uh i'm just going to yell put her down you disgusting little fuck how dare okay yeah i was you, trying to save your life you, okay um hmm. <sighs> these creatures uh make an intimidation roll uh, this is like i mean this is like really gonna be really high to convince these creatures to to even pause what they're doing but oh yeah but yeah you start shouting that across the yard we'll see if yeah. they respond 15 yeah the i mean these things are yeah. It it was mostly just Oh yeah. Uh to yeah. Just to yell at them. I mean, yeah, I can picture this. You run back to where Kadam is still trying to get to Valor, and we can see you holding the pistol out, firing and missing, and just shouting across the yard as these creatures are <laughs> trying to pull the body away. Taking us to Kadam, you see this happening. So with sixty feet yeah. Uh, Valor is all, and uh, Wazik are sharing the same space. Yes. Yes. Uh, te- so technically not, because Wazik and the other one would be pulling, right? So they're okay. Yeah, not quite sharing the same space. Then I am going to move bonus action, uh, Misty Step again. Okay. Right there. Okay. Uh, hold on. Can I get? Yeah, I'm going to get to her the side then, in that case. Okay. There. Toll the dead on Wazig. Okay. I need a wisdom save, please. Okay. Wisdom save, here we go. A nine. Wazig that is, fails. Wazik is we are damaged. doing 2d12. Come on. That's fine. Uh, that's 11, but I have a thing now. <laughs> uh yes uh uh 16 points of necrotic damage because i have potent spell casting now which means i add my my wisdom modifier to my oh that's damage. awesome uh what, <laughs> what does it look like as wazik dies from this spell as you appear there next to valor all those wounds that he already has just gape open wide almost tearing him apart as uh it's it's odd it's like a mix of 
black demon ichor and whatever kind of fluid these creatures originally had just spills out and it falls back and just kind of and goes limp. Uh, the other one next to it immediately drops Valor <laughs> and is like shaking their head, uh, trying Take to back away. away from her. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, at this point, all of the Madcaps have given up on this. That if if you don't do an attack of opportunity, that one just scrambles away um, and and dives into the scrap pile and disappears. Um, the other one as well, scrambling away. Uh, as Kadam from behind this flame skull comes rocketing across the yard. Uh, yeah, 80 feet of movement can dash. Just comes flying up behind you. And is just shouting, Shoo! Shoo! Uh, as the madcaps are scurrying and <laughs> landing in the bits of garbage around the area and disappearing. Um, Pip, you see this flame skull go rocketing past you and trying to shoo these creatures away. Uh, before we drop out of initiative here, uh, yeah, Lulu would come flying out to see all this this happening. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're out of initiative. Um, Valor will lose one one more round, so Valor's at three rounds. Um, but before we get to Kadam, really quick, Pip, what are you doing in this moment? You see all the Madcaps scatter, and now Kadam and the Flame Skull are over by Valor's dead body. Uh, what do you do in this this instant? Um, Pip falls to her knees and uh, just breaks down uh, a little bit. This was supposed to be a fun little diversion, not something serious. Yeah. And normally if it ever got this serious, she would just turn and run and cut her losses. But that is not, that's not even a choice for her right now, which is something new, something she is not used to. So I think she's going to take a few moments to, to just ugly cry yeah. before, uh, wiping her really snotty nose on her sleeve and just like and uh, jogging over to see well how long has it been it's well been three you so you drop on your knees and begin sobbing and while that is happening we can see pip just like completely breaking down in this moment we're gonna pan over to kadam who's standing over Valor's body and Kadam, I mean, what do you do? I imagine you're probably acting quick, but what, yeah. is, what does this look like as we pan over, we see you there? I also drop to my knees and plunge my hand into the bag of holding and pull out one of those 300 gold piece diamonds that I bought at Candle Key. Oh my God. And I, hands shaken, place it on her chest and I'm going to cast Revivify. All right. Uh, I believe I I believe I established at the beginning of this that I wanted to play with the fading light rules. I, yep. Okay. Just 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 check checking in about that. Um, so for Revivify, uh, so normally for uh, just real quick, normally um, this is I believe it's Matt Mercer's rules on on bringing people back to life. I really like it because it makes dying a little more intense, feel a little more powerful. So Revivify does not automatically work. You need to make a roll to see if it works. So let me double check though the rules to make sure we do this correctly. Um, bear with me as I have to find find it. I was not, I was, I was not expecting this. If Valor has never died before, the DC is 10. Okay, and it's just a straight d20 roll from you adding your whiz modifier? Yes. Okay. Okay, so she'll be fine. She'll be well, fine. We'll see. Right, right. Guidance? Just... I don't think it's an ability check. It's just... I mean, it technically is. I'm using... Um, it's a wisdom check. That's true. I am not going to guide myself. Okay. Um, 
may I do a little bit of narrative? Absolutely, please. As I put the diamond on her chest, I think back to that conversation that she and I had in the woods after the first null fight, where we talked about the boundary between life and death being the same thing, being a threshold that one crosses over and how all my life at that point I had been standing at the threshold and helping people back and forth over it and Valor said that she just stood at the door and shoved people over right now I want to summon up that doorway and for the first time in my life step over that threshold myself and call out to her Valor please come back Fifteen. The wound on her chest, the armor has been sundered slightly right there in the center, and you can see the gout of blood and the wound, knowing that that was very much a fatal spot. And you watch as it slowly seals shut, still covered in blood, still blood across the armor. And you watch as her chest very slowly rises and then falls. Rises and falls. And her open eyes flutter for a moment. Well, that was the most bullshit thing I've ever experienced. Uh, Kadam. I take her face in my hands. And just hold her there. She takes a moment and leans into it pulls herself up and leans into your shoulder, her cheek kind of pressed against yours. You can just feel her breath kind of hitting your ear. And you hear her whisper. Thank you for pulling me back through. Yeah. I don't want to do this without you, Valor. Thanks, Kadam. I... I wouldn't want to leave you alone. Uh, At this point, you can kind of hear Pip's moment coming to an end. Pip, this is right when you're sort of wiping the snot from your nose. Pip, you can see as you look up through your teary eyes, Valor is up, embracing Kadam. Just, I'm, I'm sobbing at this point. Yeah, um, Pip takes a moment to, to just look at them and let them have their moment. Um, and then, I guess, collapses in around both of them and hugs them really tight and starts ugly sobbing again. 
I I do not want Pip touching me right now. Okay. So Kadam pulls away from it. Uh, Valor. Valor, I think, lets you come in and sort of, as you're crying, is kind of patting you on the back and then kind of pulls you away to look at you. Looking down at you, she kind of scrunches her face. I'm so sorry. I fucked up. Look, I... To be honest, I don't really blame you. I wanted to get into this with you, and I didn't think these things were going to be like that either. They look like such easy little shits. This won't happen again. We probably sh should be a bit more careful. I think we underestimated where we are. Yeah, we're in hell. Kind of looks over Kadam. Where, where, what are you doing in this moment? I'm watching the two of them. I'm still right there with them, mm -hmm. on my on my knees with everyone. But I'm, I, I moved away from Pip. Yeah, um, Pip notices this and kind of glances. I look at Kadam and says, it won't happen again. Hands uh, gets up and leaves. Valor is looking at you, Kadam, kind of waiting. It's it wasn't all her fault. I, I was playing into it too. We really got in over our heads. We already were, Valor. I, I honestly was trying to just have a bit of fun and then it just escalated so fast. What, what were you doing? What were, how did you... What, what, what were you doing? Pip, Pip wanted to... Grab one of those... Uh, those things... To speak with them... Like... Knowing they would be... I, I don't know, she wanted to kidnap this creature and... It... Wow. Because... Did you tell- you told Valor. Did you tell Valor, Pip? I'm trying to remember. You did, okay. Yeah, yeah. She said that th there was those two imps, and they told her that that little madcap that we were trying to grab was out to kill Lulu. What? I, we need to, uh... I think we need to settle down from all this and and talk talk it through with with Pip. Yeah, let's let's get everyone back together. I, I think it might be at that point. Yeah, that hurtling around the corner. Yeah, <laughs> um, is I mean Calliope in Big Dummy. Yeah, um, just like skidding. I think. I think Big Dummy might be enlarged. Okay. Um, sure. I like. If I mean, if do you have the spell slot for it? I would say I, I don't have that many more, but I'm I'm burning it. Okay, so uh, uh, as Big yeah. Dummy comes barreling around in this yeah. huge and I, form, I think, I think Little Dummy had like some sort of like top emergency like code or something sure. that they gave Calliope, and yeah, Calliope and Big Dummy just like come barreling down. And like, I guess like, skid to a stop like next to this like group, like looking around like, uh, I don't know the 
tail whipping around, like looking for targets, and like Kyle IP just says, What's going on? Where are they? What happened? What are the threats? We're done. We're done. It's every. uh... I I didn't see what happened, but they're gone. Where's Pip? Uh, oh, I, I think I kind of stepped on Pip or roosted on them. They're just fine. <laughs> well, Pip, where did oh, you wait, go? No, Pip, yeah, Pip, Pip you left, stepped left. away. Yeah. Oh. Where did you go, Pip? Uh, Pip is going to Mad Maggie. Okay, so you don't see Pip anywhere. Um, none of you do. Um, and I think as, as you're all looking around for Pip, um, that's right when you kind of sense movement and see that flame skull kind of it, it took off and was like berating those madcaps and chasing them away as this was all happening it kind of floats back to see you all standing there um and the flame skull hovering there looking you all over i am terribly sorry for those vile creatures they will be reprimanded um, and as this floating skull is speaking to you all in this kind of odd discordant moment, um, we're going to cut over to Pip as Pip is walking off towards Mad Maggie's. Um, oh, K- Clive, say, yeah. What were you? Yeah, yeah I'd Clive-y. probably be like, uh, little dummy up. Um, and send little dummy up in the air to try to see Pip. Okay. Air, yeah. Go ahead and roll um, perception roll for me f- for for a little dummy. Um, Pip, were you you? I mean, honestly, like, what were you like trying to slink away, or you were just kind of like just walking straight there? Just. I. This is a difficult question. I don't know because. Uh... I, uh, Pip knows Kadam would disapprove, but also is desperate to like. No, Pip isn't. Pip is just going. Yeah. Okay. I would say then what you got. You got an eighteen. I got an eighteen. I would say you definitely will <sighs> dummy spots Pip moving across the yard, a, a, quite a distance at this point. Like, and yeah. can see Pip is probably getting ready to round the bend, you know, around that corner of the hideout towards Mad Maggie's lair. Yeah. Here's here's something where I want to see what Pip is doing in character, and I don't want to stop you from doing that. Yeah. Also, this is like what Calliope would do, like on high alert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's also where I am. I want to see you do this, and Kadam does not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say. Here's the thing. I think the what's happening here is yes. Little Dummy sees this, but is seeing it just as Pip is rounding that corner and then, like, out of sight. Right as, like, Little Dummy sees this. So Little Dummy knows that Pip went in that direction and has disappeared around the corner. Um, I don't know. What does Little Dummy do with that information? I think just, like, points. And maybe maybe this is how we do it, where it's like, okay, let's let's get Valor loaded up in Big Dummy. I don't want to split up again. Okay. Pip went that way. Okay. So as you all load uh valor i mean valor kind of is is like yeah raises her hand and is able to kind of get herself up and sort of limps over here valor um i'm gonna cast cure wounds at fourth level because that is the only spell slot i have left oh my goodness okay i have a level two left and that's it wow Twenty-four points back to Valor. Nice. Uh, that's amazing. Go ahead. You can add that to Valor. Yeah. So Valor, uh, with that healing magic, immediately is able to pick herself up and move on her own. Kind of looks at you, uh, Calliope. I think I'll, I'll help myself here. Thank you. And uh, starts to stride next to you. Um, and do you all start okay. moving in the direction that little dummy With pointed? Lulu. Okay. Lulu I'm fluttering. holding Valor's hand. Valor holds your hand, too. Um, That's good. It's real awkward when one person's holding and the other's just kind of limp there. <laughs> <laughs> um, she actually gives it a squeeze as you start to walk. Um, as you do move away, though, that uh, flame skull 
kind of watching you leave. Uh, I did, you do come find me when you're done with your business. I, 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 I would like to, um, I'm terribly, I, I'm in charge of these foul creatures and they- Thank you. And just is muttering to, themsel- to himself and just kind of starts floating back to wherever his uh, area was as he's muttering to himself. Um, you all start going in that direction. Pip, you uh, round the bend and can see those stairs leading up into Mad Maggie's lair. Um, do you head up head up in there? Okay. So heading up the stairs, walking into the kind of darker interior of this uh, larger cave-like space, there's a small, small crack far, far up above with a little bit of the Avernon light spilling through, and you can see these kind of mismatch of uh, metal rafters kind of making up the ceiling here. You walk past the large metal platform that's full of all sorts of strange alchemical concoctions and you can hear the kind of sound of somebody working, um, the sound of clinking glass, of um, metal components being slid around and bits of flame sort of (laughs) burning up. Um, There's somebody working up within the alchemical station and directly ahead you can see the kind of flap to uh, the entryway into her abode where you met her originally. Mags? The working at the alchemical station stops and uh, you hear the voice weirdly omnipresent, not really coming from that direction, just almost sourceless. Oh, yes, Pip. Have you come to see me alone? I have. And I'm going to need you to put Mickey out for a bit because I know I can't call them my friends exactly, but the others are going to come here. They're not stupid. They'll know where I've gone. Oh, you don't Don't... want them coming in? Don't hurt them, but we need to talk. We just need to stall them. Why don't you come up here and join me, Pip? We can work and talk at the same time, just like old times. Well, I've brought you something. Oh, I can sense you're not uh, very happy right now. Please come, come to me, child. And uh, you hear her let out a little whistle. And uh, she calls out from within there. Mickey, why don't you just go and politely tell our guests to wait outside? Uh, And you hear the lumbering sound and watch as that fiendish flesh golem comes lumbering out from the alchemical workstation towards the entryway uh, and the darkened shadowed shape of this flesh golem stands in the entryway like a imposing wall uh, do you head up towards the platform okay yeah um, ascending the kind of metallic stairs the sound of your boots reverberating in this space you get to the top and can see uh, workbenches and shelves and little burners going with some sort of like strange fuel source and uh kind of in the middle of all of this at one of these uh large worked iron tables uh covered in supplies you see maggie there smiling at you the eyes kind of wandering the room and then both of them fixating on you <sighs> your friends will probably be here shortly come i, I was just getting uh some materials together for the ritual that we'll be doing for Lulu. I assuming you still want to do that. Lulu says that she wants to. Oh, wonderful. Come here. I want to show you something. Come. All right. All right. Uh, as you step up, um, you can see that she has this what looks to be um, kind of a pile of salt that's sort of to one side and then this large like beaker there's just some sort of clear kind of liquid um, within there and it's bubbling and burning and kind of evaporating and there seems to be some device that's sort of catching 
salt out of this liquid and she's sort of like distilling it out. Um, as she's like working on that, she kind of points and goes, uh, this is one of the most crucial components for tomorrow's ritual. Uh, you see this here, this liquid. And she kind of extends a gnarled hand towards you and just gently touches you on the side of the cheek. This here is the tears of the damned. <laughs> it's oh so delightful and such a perfect component for what I need tomorrow. Ah. Uh, it's Despite quite... herself, I think Pip is actually really interested. It's just like, how do you how do you collect those? Oh, it's <laughs> quite a difficult process, but there are places within Avernus where one can find such things in abundance. Oh. I, I, I did have a question, um, actually. Uh, can anybody do anything terrible with holy fant spit? Holy fant spit? Ooh. <laughs> You could do many things with that. Uh, whether it's terrible or not is, uh, well, I suppose it's one's opinion on whether it's terrible or not. Hey, Ma Magis, Mags, I'd love... I oh, actually yes, yes, do yes. want to talk to you about this, but... I don't have that much time right now, and I want your opinion on this. Yes, and, uh, yes. Pip pulls the shield of Gargoth, the Gargoth <laughs> shields out of her knapsack. Okay, so that gets set down there on the table. She, her eyes go wide and both of them sort of fixate on the shield. Um, and immediately she kind of straightens and cocks her head and then the eyes, one of them looks at you. Ooh. What a delightful friend you have! Where did you find this? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> he's just kind of been tagging along. I think we got him in a vault or something. But he's been like very, oh. like, I mean, pretty useless. I forget he can hear us. Yes, yes, he's telling me now. I see, yes. Oh, and Baldur's Gate. Oh, delightful. <laughs> what, what, what would you, um, what would you like? Me to, uh, what, what, what would you like me to do with this? Well, what would you like him for? No, oh, I, what would I like? Oh, I'm I just would, curious. I would be delighted to take this off your hands if that's what you're asking me. Oh, no, 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 I'm asking what would you do if you had this in your possession? What would I do? Oh, I could think of many things. I would probably just enjoy being in the presence of this Gargoth. We could chat and I could show him things that he could not have. <laughs> Actually, that does sound really good. Maybe I will just... <laughs> um, uh, but, well, Gargoth, what do you have to offer me? <sighs> I've told you, I could guide you around this place. I could show you valuable things. I could make introductions. Well, I think we're going for Tiamat. So mostly, I need something to keep the people around me safe. That's what I need. I'm a shield, aren't I? I've You're seen some of- <laughs> What? I'm sorry. I, you're just like... You're a shield. And you do fireballs. But I need something that can protect the people I'm with. Uh, I've gotta, I gotta remind myself what this thing can do. Uh, well, we don't have to do like the, the no, specific... No, no, no. I, I, right just, I was just trying to... Re yeah, yeah. Um, oh, okay. yeah. I... <laughs> I can force my presence to be felt and instill a deep dread and fear within anyone. I can scare people away. What do you want from me? 
I'll take that. Well, Maggie, what do you have to offer me? For what exactly? For this shield? You'd like... Oh, I, I mean, you just want to torture him. I can do that for you. <laughs> yes, you can, but I won't get to experience it directly. <sighs> Maybe there's a way we can work to make that happen. Oh? You have those eyes. You can watch. Yes, I could do that, but I could maybe do something more, if you're willing. Well, what are you offering in exchange? Oh. So you're telling me that I get to experience you torturing this being whenever I like, through you. Basically, and Gargoth, I'm going to do it regardless, so either you can have something from me, or you can just deal with it. I... What? What, what, are you, what, what do you want from me? I try, I've told you everything <laughs> I can do. I've given... Uh, no. it, it's quite fine. It's quite alright. In exchange for this, if you let me experience... Every moment you interact with this Gargalth, every moment you bring annoyance and torture and discomfort from this being, I get to be there for every moment. Well, uh, hmm, I'd be willing to give you quite a lot. Ah, uh, what are you seeking right now, Pip? Well, you know what we're seeking. The Sword of Zariel. Oh, but what am I seeking? I... The Sword of Zariel is something I can't really help with. I Maybe we find something inside Lulu's head, but I've already offered that. Yes, I... Protection. I need to be able to do damage. And I need to be able to oh. stop damage from happening. Let me see that. And she points at the pistol at your side. Yep. I could make some adjustments to this. Make it a bit more potent. And you want something to be able to protect your friends. I might be able to add a little bit of something there as well. If you let me... Mm. I want I want to experience everything every moment of pain that you cause another doesn't have to be Gargalth anyone in your life that you slight deceive cause discomfort in any way I want that Pip well you can have it I do enough uh, of it on my own already perfect I'll say at, at this moment um, the rest of you have come up the stairs and see this hulking form of Mickey standing there uh, blocking your way um, you can maybe just barely kind of hear like very low voices farther back in the cave um, but Mickey it just stands there imposingly um, what do you the two of you do I, uh, Valor and Lulu are there but I'm asking you two as you kind of leave this what do you do excuse us Mickey we know that Pip is in here and we would like to speak with her <sighs> yes I'm gonna just try and walk past Mickey uh, with a big fat uh, claw I'm trying to remember what oh yeah it's like a, one of them is almost like a bony lobster like insect claw thing and the other is just this gnarled clawed hand um, and with the big 
pokey insect claw just holds it out and stops your progress. Can I duck under and keep going? I uh, make an acrobatics check, and Mickey's <laughs> gonna make an athletics check. Oh gosh, this is gonna go so well. Twelve. Uh, okay, let me hold on. Um, uh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Twenty-one. So, poof, just stops you in your tracks. Mickey, please. And this strange, strange tube coming out the mouth just kind of... I'm not looking to pick more fights. I don't know. I don't know about you. Are we, are we just using real names now? Oh, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, if I know Pip, it, she's just gone to like make some damn fool deal. She keeps running away. She so could have run, run away. This, this feels a little different. What, and then get murdered by a bunch of wasps out in the middle of nowhere? I don't know. I've seen people run away, and that didn't feel like running away. Man, I could be wrong, though. I don't know what the situation was at all. Help! Uh, hmm. I'm going to do a quick one sec. Sure. Um, Kadam, you that? shout that. Uh, Pip, make make a make a perception roll for me. Okay. Oh, shit. okay. Uh, a I have not been rolling well. Uh, okay. You. Uh. You, you don't hear it, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something here, so I'm gonna describe something that, for the audience, so that we all kind of see this happen. As you are having this conversation with Mad Maggie, you're not quite to the moment where she's like about to, you know, offer you this, and you're considering this deal. Um, as the audience, we watch as as Kadam takes in this deep breath and shouts this, and for just a moment, we kind of hear. Kanam's voice starting to ring through the cavern and we see Mad Maggie, one of her eyes whip around into the back of her head and she just does a quick little gesture with her hand and just on the outside of this alchemical chamber there's just a sudden of utter silence it just hits and the, the sound wave is just stopped before it can reach Pip so Kadam, you shout that out and there's a long pause. Uh, what are the two of you doing? I don't feel like there's much we can do. Let's make let Pip make their own damn fool decisions. They can pick the pieces. Pick up the pieces. Do we have to? I don't want to fight Mad Maggie. Do we have and to pick I... up Pip's pieces? No. Oh. Well, that depends. What happened? What happened, Valor? You were trying to kidnap one of these creatures? Is this is this one of those things where like Pip is a liability and we just gotta drop him off here? No, I look, I We both made a dumb, stupid ass mistake, okay? Pip came to me, asked me if I want to have some fun. I said yes. She told me what was happening and I thought sure. She was informed by these two imps, those pins and needles, that uh, one of these madcaps was was looking to kill Lulu. So Pip just wanted to snatch this madcap away and ask it some questions. And it went tits up. Everything went wrong. Uh, Pip was getting ready to uh, 
I, I didn't exactly see what happened, but I just suddenly I heard the commotion. I was trying to create a distraction uh, to distract the little madcaps while Pip grabbed the other one. And then suddenly Pip came running out from the alleyway being chased by this madcap and being sliced and diced by it. And then all the other ones went into a frenzy and started attacking us. It, it just spiraled out of control. I... <laughs> so based off of hearsay, you went to abduct someone from their home and they retaliated. Yes. We made the... It's... For fun. Yes. She I looks... turn and uh, I, I, I walk several places off. She looks up at uh, Mickey. <sighs> Look, just let us through. Come on. She starts to kind of clench her fist and is like, you can see her jaw tensing. Uh, Kadam, you just step down in a way. Yeah, I need a moment. I have sent little dummy. Okay. While Valor is shacking Mickey and yelling, just be like, hey. Yeah, uh, go ahead and do a stealth roll with advantage as... Well, Dummy is just, I don't know, my main character, I guess, this episode. <laughs> uh, 17. 17. Um, yeah, that should, uh, uh, yeah, that should definitely be Mickey's passive perception. Um, little Dummy slips past and disappears into the chamber and starts to float towards the sound of, well, actually, no sound, um, and then seems to kind of pass through some sort of threshold and it and suddenly hears more clearly the sound of two people speaking um yeah. are, i forget well, you... just gonna eavesdrop and watch yeah. are you able to see and hear through little dummy? i am not okay we're gonna have to have, do a recap yeah later so a little dummy floating above watching this uh floats in right at the end of this conversation as uh, it's wrapping up and Mad Maggie looks at Pip and says, So, are you willing to give me this? I get to feel everything that you do when you cause others pain. Work for you? Oh. Oh, sorry. Hold on, I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. I've, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, no. That silence fell. My magic is too powerful. <laughs> no, that's not my stick. I don't take people's voices. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too strong. It was too strong. It was too strong. Um, so, does that work for you? You won't force me to cause any pain. You'll just experience it. Yes, yes, I will experience any time you cause pain. I know it's a bit twisted, but uh, everyone has their kinks. Yeah, I'm not here to kink shame. Good. It's a pretty <laughs> bad place for it, to be honest. I, I really... You're I not going to get very far and make many friends down here if you do that. I, absolutely. This is something I can do. In Good. exchange, you're going to help me protect these people. Yes, I will give you a way to protect your friends and 
to uh, be a bit more potent down here, and she gently strokes the pistol. You don't have to call them my friends. Oh. Okay, yes. Your associates. She extends a bony hand towards you in a handshake gesture. I won. What the hell? And Pip holds her hand out to shake. Her hands, a bit, quite a bit larger than yours, cups it and squeezes down. Oh, wonderful. As both eyes lock with you and you feel kind of a cold chill course through your arm as she squeezes for a moment. Ah, I'll get started on this right away. Um, and she turns to look at the pistol. Just give me a bit of time and I'll make it all good for you. Max, are we friends? Well, of course we are. We've been through so much together. I, uh... Hmm. Despite everything your brother said, I am definitely your friend. I have your best interests at heart. When was the last time you saw your brother, by the way? Okay, I know it's been so long. I don't even know how long I've been down here. Oh yes, time is strange down here. Strange in the Feywild, too. It doesn't matter. I'm never going to see him again. Oh. It'd be a lot easier if he were here. You might see him. You might. Well then, let me get to work. And she uh, turns and looks back. Uh, I'm going to let uh, your f c associates are all waiting outside. I'm, I'm going to let them in, yes? Companions. Yeah, I'll Companions. go see them now. I'll all go right. face them. Um, and you just catch like a very imperceptible little flick of her hand and then she lets out a, a whistle and uh, Mickey, it's fine. It's fine. And goes, turns and starts working. The rest of you outside see Mickey kind of look over uh, their shoulder and then look back at you and step aside and sort of gesture their arms into the cave. Put the Gargalth shield away and just watch them walk in. Yeah, Calliope's just like, what's that? Um, it's now, I guess, folded up Big Dummy again to, like, fit in here. Okay. Um. <laughs> you see Calliope coming up the metal stairs into this work workspace. Pip, I got one question. Are you going to be a too big a liability? Because you're on that line right now. I don't know, but I am going to be a lot more helpful, hopefully. Yeah. Prove it. Why should I believe you? I would have just left. Mm -hmm. I don't care about Elturel, really. I'm sorry. You don't gotta. Pip. But I care about you. And Valor and, you know, Kadam. And it's like she says not making eye contact. I care about you. 
Uh, oh, Kitlins, can we have this conversation somewhere else? You can hear the clinking of glass behind Pip and see Maggie just working away. And she kind of calls out, Oh, don't mind me. I can go uh, get make myself some tea if you want some privacy. And she kind of wraps up what she's doing and wanders off. Can I get a off. beat on Mad Maggie? You what? Can I get a beat on Mad Maggie? Like, uh, do you want to just like, watch her? Yes, but I want to see, like, how is she feeling? What? How... You want to make an what ins did insight tell check? Her? Yes. <laughs> we can make an insight check, yeah. I think I think I also communicated to you, Kidan, somehow, like, while we were waiting outside, that I had sent Little Dummy in. So you know that we have at least eventual eyes on it. Okay. That's a natural 18. Uh, wow. 26. 26. I mean, you're not going to be able to read, you know, off of body language that she necessarily just did sure, but something. What, but what kind of mood is she in? Oh, she's so happy right now. Like, she's like, she's like glowing. Uh, she's just kind of has a little, little... Uh, pit, like a little, you know, in her step. She's got a little uh, jump in her step as she's kind of wa waddling away. Um, and you, I, I think as she starts to go down the stairs on the other side, you can just make out her starting to go. <laughs> as she goes like waddling towards her hut in the back of the cave. You're a good kid. I've enjoyed. No, I'm not. You don't have to lie to me. I've been. That. I've enjoyed getting up to stuff with you. Like our times, like in the cracks, fine and stuff. But Pip, you're a tool to me. I am going to get El Terrell back, and I need everybody here. I'm with to be working towards that. I know. I've known you for like a week, kid. Two weeks, maybe. I don't know. Time's weird down here. Time is weird. And I'd like to get to know you better. I'd like to be friends. And I'm glad that you're having some sort of connection to other people for the first time in your life and feeling part of the team. That's great. I would love to have a team here all working together. But I have my priorities. And I need to know if you having you around is going to conflict with that and compromise those priorities. I'm working towards the same priorities as you. What else do I have here? I could leave, but I need something. I need somebody to tell me what to do. And you are that person right now. All of you are. And if that's what we're working towards, if that's what you are working towards, I'm a tool, I know that. Well, I'm a better tool now. Use me. I don't... I know you just made some sort of deal with Mad Maggie. Yes. And I look over to, like, a uh, little dummy for confirmation of that. And, like, little dummy yeah. gives like, a little... Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you have, like, some kind of, like, toy or ability. But, like... Your abilities were never in question, Pip. You're brilliant. You're so good. At... That wasn't good enough to do yeah, but that's the thing. That's not your abilities. It's your judgment that I'm concerned about. And going off and making deals and looking for power instead of... Well, that's why I'm hanging around you. I know I have terrible judgment. Great, great. So come to us. Instead of an evil hag who's, like, manipulating you. And 
I understand the irony of it, but sees you as a tool. You're not doing a very good job of convincing me about had... that right now. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Aren't we going to see her tomorrow for a ritual that's going to help us? Yeah. I'm... I mean... Yeah. I... yeah, we are. I'm not saying that whatever you just did was a mistake, but I'm saying what I need from you is to rely on us and work as a team. And I know you went and talked with Valor, and Valor let me know that this isn't all on you. I understand that. But like, if you could have like stuck around and checked in before immediately going off and like going on another hijink thing, that would have been great. I would have really appreciated that. I'm not used to, well, I guess I can't say I'm not used to people dying for these sort of things, but I'm not used to somebody like Valor, like you, getting seriously hurt yeah. over it. Oh my god. Yeah, things go tits up. I, th I think the only way that we're going to get through this is working together. And not working at cross purposes. Or something, I don't know. I never led a good lab. It was always my weakness. I always tried to go and do everything myself. So, I don't know. I struggle with it too. I think. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm glad you were able to get to Dom in time, it sounded like. That was that was when it stopped going tits up. The flame skull also helped. Oh yeah? That was weird. I noticed that hanging around. Definitely going to rely on those things a little bit more if we ever get across the madcap again. It seemed to seem to really hate them. Yeah. But I, 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 I understand. We... <sighs> we'll communicate. I'll talk. Right. And you need to tell me. You need to tell me what to do. Okay, I can do that. I was never the brains of the operation. I'm, I'm starting to feel like this is starting to get like a pity party sort of situation. And you're smart. Not many people can do what you can do. That wasn't self-deprecating. That was just true. Uh, I'm hearing Mad Maggie a little bit in that, maybe. Like it's just, it's beside the point. If if I wanted a tool that only shot fireballs, I would have gone and made a deal with that shield fellow. Like, your strength is that you can think and you can make decisions. I just want you to, like, I don't know, do better at that? I think I'm going to need to journal this one out. What? What one? Turtle this one? No, I, I'm just going to have to write about this one in my journal. Okay. Okay. Well, I've said my piece. I'm glad, I'm glad we're all safe, I guess. Kidam, you got anything? I don't really trust myself to talk right now, in large part because of how angry I am and how confused I am. I don't feel like I can make it. I don't trust myself to be consistent right now. I don't trust myself to fully know what I want. I'm going to need some time. All right. Maybe we should split up the tents. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. And I think with that, we maybe should come to a close here. And we can see, as a kind of final scene, the group separating the two tents, getting them situated, and Kadam heading into one, and Pip into the other, as you process what just happened here. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. That was... Oh, wild oh, oh, oh. that was super unexpected i'm sorry for calling you a tool i don't feel like that in real life well yeah. let's let's do some uh, some processing here um okay. off stream but great uh thanks for joining us everybody oh. yeah. yeah thanks um, for joining us i came so close to being like by the way i made a deal with gideon <laughs> <laughs> i thought about pressing you on that i came so close <laughs> Oh man, I got it. Yeah, I got it. We got that little it. weasel word. Of, we're working towards the same purposes. We got a whole bunch of things to figure out here. All right. Yeah. Thank you, our gift too. I really appreciate you joining us. When you uh, really do. Yeah. Um, yeah. A you lot are of drama. A pleasure to have in chat. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Good night. See you next Good night. week. Bye. Good night. Bye.